the story of one of the world's top bank robberies. Here's what happened. When American-led forces first entered Baghdad in April of 2003, looters had already hit the central bank of Iraq. The CBI is where much of Iraq's treasures, including the country's foreign currency reserves, were kept. Troops found burst pipes and blazing fires, but the looters had been unable to get into the bank's main vault or get access to the bank's deposits. As it turned out, someone else had already made a hefty withdrawal from the building to the tune of around one billion U.S. dollars, easily making this the largest bank heist in history. At around 4 a.m. on March 18th, the day before the American cruise missiles began to rain down on the Iraqi capital, Baghdad, three large trucks pulled up to the central bank and for several hours loaded a steady stream of metal boxes filled with some 900 million in U.S. $100 bills and 100 million in euros. All of this was loaded into waiting vehicles. It is reported that the head of the Iraqi security forces, who was the son of the soon-to-be deposed Iraqi dictator, gave the note to the bank's governor. Regardless of who did what, the truckloads of cash did eventually fall into the hands of foreigners. American troops discovered hundreds of aluminum boxes, each containing about four million in $100 bills at one of the dictator's palaces. They also found around $600 million at Uday's house inside of a wall. They later learned that this was Uday's personal stash, not money from the Central Bank of Iraq. Imagine that, Uday knew how to save. This is an inside joke for people who already know or knew Uday. The money that the American troops discovered was secretly flown to Kuwait where military personnel counted it. The White House and the Pentagon decided to keep the money and have the newly created Coalition Provisional Authority distribute the money to military commanders on the ground to use as they saw fit. As the billions of dollars of shrink-wrap cash was flown back into Iraq, the money began to disappear. Of course, the FBI followed the money and more than a couple of U.S. soldiers were caught with an abundance of cash in their bank accounts and new shiny toys like new BMWs, etc. But here is the kicker. This mis- directed cash which the FBI followed back to the United States was only a small, small percentage of monies missing in Iraq. Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction Stuart Bowen told the LA Times the missing money may represent the largest theft of funds in history. What money was he talking about? Well, it seems that 6.6 .6 billion U.S. dollars disappeared. Honest, check the news archives and the links in the description. In June of 2011, Iraq started asking questions because as it turns out, the 6.6 .6 billion U.S. dollars was Iraq's own money from a different source. This money was placed into the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and was the funds that was withheld from the Iraqs during a decade of harsh economic sanctions under their previous leader. Now, here's the real kicker. Iraq wanted its money back. The Los Angeles Times says some officials in Baghdad threatened to take the U.S. government to court to reclaim the missing money. No. They could not blame this on a few young misguided soldiers. The last known holder of the funds, the 6.6 .6 billion US dollars, before it mysteriously disappeared, was the US government. 
Congress was about to have a baby without ever having had sex. The thought of having to cough up $6.6 billion and give to Iraq destroyed many personal dinner plans in Washington, D.C. But not to worry, this story ends well, or so I think. Ten years later, the U.S government, along with the Central Bank of Iraq, was able to prove that the money ended up exactly where it was supposed to. Most of it was handed over to the Central Bank of Iraq following the dissolution of the U.S. temporary government in Iraq in 2004. The rest of the money, around $217 million, was stored in a presidential palace vault and doled out in parcels to fund various projects. My question is, why did it take the Central Bank of Iraq 10 years to learn how to count or to find 6.6 billion U.S. dollars?